Welcome back to Education Matters. In the first segment, we talked a lot about the stats of teacher pay. In this segment, we're going to find out what the teachers are saying. Joining me is North Carolina public school teacher Bobby Kavnar. Bobby is from Gaston County, and most importantly, he is the 2016-2017 North Carolina Teacher of the Year. So first, congratulations on that. I think I've seen you once since uh, you, were, uh, you won that award, so uh, congratulations. Well, thank you. Now, I know from working with uh, some of your predecessors uh, as Teachers of the Year, one of your roles is really to kind of be an ambassador for North Carolina teachers, which also means you travel with the state quite a bit during your year of service, and you get to hear from teachers. What, what are teachers telling you? Let's first talk about the, uh, the teacher pay issue. I mean, what, are, what do you hear from uh, well, your own experiences as well as what teachers tell you? Well, I, you're right, I do travel all over the state, um, especially to some of the colleges of education. I'll, I'll visit a lot of schools. And um, you know that 50,000 number that, that you talked about in your earlier segment, there are a lot of teachers who don't teach in Wake or Charlotte Mech who say, I've never seen a check like that. You know? but, um, but I think more importantly is just the feeling of, it, of what's going on in education in North Carolina, because we can talk all day about where we rank or what the number is. Is it 50,000? Is it not? But the reality is that if we're not recruiting good people into teaching, obviously we're not compensating enough. There's um, all across the state, I keep hearing from colleges of education that they are down 30, 40 percent in enrollment. I talk to young teachers and one of the questions I always ask is, how many of you were told not to do this? And every hand goes up. They're told by their parents, they're told by their peers, they're told by teachers, don't do this in North Carolina. And I think that's a very sad message that young people are being told that this is not a profession that has a future. And it's mostly because of pay. And, and it, it is because, it's because of pay, but I think more importantly, what's happened with pay and with uh, master's incentives and with um, teaching fellows and programs like that is that we as a state have sent a message that we're not interested in investing in the future of teaching. Yeah, we've got a chart that we're, we're going to show, pull up on the screen for our viewers, but it's, it really talks about sort of where North Carolina ranks. Um, and you can see, again, this is from 2008, 2009. We went from just a few years ago. Uh, you, were, you were a teacher here, yes. and you've been here in North Carolina for 13 years. That's we were right. ranked 25th nationally. Again, not to get hung up on the 50,000 or the numbers, but this that trend is not good if you're trying to say this right. is uh, uh, this is something that our state values. Right, and you know, obviously, cost of living changes across the country, but we were number one in the southeast. I think that's probably a, a standard that we should look to: is let's be number one in the southeast. Let's be number one in states that are similar to us in, in cost of living and standard of living. And, um, and more importantly, let's send a message to young people that this is a good career, right. that you can be paid similarly to the degrees that are required in this career. Now, I have a master's degree in literature. I have a teacher who teaches close to me who has a PhD in mathematics. Uh, North Carolina pays 78 cents on the dollar for what I would get if I left teaching and went into a career with a similar degree level. Yeah, we're starting to see some more studies about that, which is um, um, just the idea of treating teachers like professionals. I mean, you, you're a professional, you've got an advanced degree, mm -hmm. yet, like you said, and we are losing a fair number of teachers to the private sector because uh, the private sector seems to be further ahead than where the you know, state government is in terms of uh, recognizing and keeping talent. Yeah, I think, I think in North Carolina we've done an excellent job of building our economy and growing our economy. And you know, since the, the collapse in the economy, we have seen an explosion, and, and an explosion that is affecting the schools because we have thousands and thousands of more children than we did before, and that's great. We're bringing in businesses, we're bringing in, um, we're bringing in money, but the teachers are not seeing that same growth that they that other industries are seeing. Right. Uh, the value of our pay has dropped roughly 13 percent in the last 10 years. Now, just not not just talking about salary, but uh, I heard you speak uh, a few weeks ago, and you mentioned uh, classroom resources. And we actually, you were the inspiration for an episode we had two weeks ago about teachers spending money out of their own pocket. I mean, what's That's been right. your experience as a teacher yourself, and what are you hearing from other teachers about that? Well, as as money coming in for things like, you know, they say textbooks, but textbooks means kind of all the materials that we use to teach, you know, um, as that money dries up, teachers aren't going to let kids fall behind. We're not going to give up on kids. And so we seek for parent involvement, we seek for community involvement, we seek, we seek resources anywhere we can find them, right. but ultimately when they can't be found, we draw out of our own pockets. And so the value of our pay 
has decreased, but also we're paying more into our own classrooms and paying more for resources. One of my messages as Teacher of the Year is let's give a kid the things they need to be successful. Give a kid a pencil when they need a pencil. That pencil has to come from somewhere, and often it comes from the teacher's own pocket. Right, and that's something that's, we're, we're going to keep talking about that topic on Education Matters, because I think it's something that the public really needs to understand, because it gets lost in um, the debates about numbers and dollars and budgets, as we're really talking about the children. Yeah. And what they have, to, to, and what the teachers need to reach every child. Exactly. I mean, which is, again, we're, we appreciate uh, uh, folks like you who continue to go into the teaching profession. What would you, um, what's your message? I mean, to, I guess, to current teachers and those who are thinking about it. I, I love what I do. I do. Uh, and I know teachers often go into the job for reasons other than pay. But at the same time, I'm a professional. I'm a licensed, degreed professional. And if we're going to expect teachers to teach things that are more demanding than ever before, we're teaching calculus and engineering and robotics and drafting. Right. And these things require licensed, degreed professionals who are advanced in their careers. And we need to respect the teaching profession. Well, we appreciate everything you do. And again, congratulations on being Teacher of the Thank Year. You. And thanks for what you do every day in the classroom. Thank thanks, you very Bobby. Much. When we come back, we're going to visit the North Carolina Virtual Public School for this week's Leadership Spotlight. Thank you.